Hi, Andy Herringshaw with Tractor Innovations. Today I'm in Shelton, Washington to show you the installation of this remote hydraulic kit onto a John Deere 4120 with the 420 loader. This is absolutely the most affordable and easiest way to get a set of remotes on your tractor. Whether it's an older model that you can't even get parts for anymore or a newer model, this kit really works on any tractor with a loader on it. I'm gonna take you through all the steps of uh, installing a bracket that's gonna hold this valve onto your tractor with no drilling, all the way back to installing the remote couplers on the back so that you can plug in any implement that you'd like. Today we're gonna to be putting a hydraulic top link on this tractor so that he can uh, move that box blade, change the angle. When you order a hydraulic top link from my website, it's gonna come with the hoses, fittings, couplers, everything installed, ready to go. No hunting for random fittings online or uh, wandering the aisles of a store to find the parts. It ships to you just like this, ready to go. This kit works for any sort of implement you could wanna put on the back of the tractor, um, including pull behinds with uh, their own actuating cylinders, to raise and lower a hay bind, or a flail mower, shift to the side, that sort of thing. This exact same kit also works if you want to run the hoses forward to run a grapple. I'll be demonstrating exactly how it works at the end of the video, so uh, stay tuned and check out my website right below here. It's got all my products listed on there, including these hydraulic top links. I build them in lots of different links for these smaller tractors. So with a, just a few simple tools, we're going to be able to put this on and you can have this running on your tractor in no time. All right, the first step to installing the kit on this John Deere is to mount this bracket to this loader support arm. We're gonna do that with a backer plate and a couple bolts, washers and nuts. This is an updated bracket. The old bracket mounted up here on the loader arm, which had the valve just a little further away from the operator. And if you wanted to remove your loader, this arm comes off. You would have had to deal with uh, your remote hydraulic kit coming off as well. So with this bracket, it's gonna be nicely within reach of the operator and it stays attached to the tractor even if you take your loader off. So there's limited room underneath this bar. I'm gonna take my two bolts, slide them through this backer plate, work that up from underneath this support arm and then through the bracket. As you get this situated, we need to make sure we've got enough room on the inside for this valve. It's about four inches thick. So I just wanna make sure I've got, yeah, at least four inches of room and this bracket isn't hitting this outside support. So that's a really great uh, space there. I've got my lock washer a nut on top of this bracket. Now I'd tighten it up with half inch wrench. That feels solid, good to go. The next step is to take the switching valve and we're gonna mount it to these two holes here on the bracket. And to do that, I've got my hardware bag. I'm just gonna empty that out into a magnetic tray here. And I need these two, two and a half inch bolts. The bolts we used down below were four inches long. So you can tell the difference. All right, on this valve, I'm gonna put a washer on, bolt through, and do that in both spots. And then I'm gonna hold that up to the bracket and slip it through. Lock washer and nut on the back side. And tighten those up with a half inch wrench. All right, here's a view of the valve from the operator station. And you can see we've got good clearance behind the valve. It's really well mounted there. It's not gonna hit anything during normal operation. Next, we can install the knob onto the valve. Make sure your lock washer is on your knob. It's a little bigger. It's a 3 8 inch thread. So 
if you accidentally used this washer somewhere else, uh, go find it. Thread it in as far as it'll go. But as it starts to get tight, this piston starts to spin. So what I like to do to get it nice and tight is use a pair of vice grips, but I want you to be really careful. Do not grab the piston where it slides into the outside body. Slide it in, that way there's no chance you're gonna pinch something that, uh, that shouldn't be pinched. Vice grips could certainly mar up that piston and uh, cause leaks in the future. So with that all the way in, I can grab just on this very outer lip. Pinch that and it still gives room for the knob to turn. There we go, that's totally tight. Pull in and out on that knob. All right, the next step is to hook up your hydraulic supply and return to your switching valve here on the loader circuit. The colors here, you can still see some of them on this uh, coupler side. If I look at the back side, all the colors are there. Black and green are your lift circuit. Red and yellow over here are your dump circuit. On this tractor, we're gonna be hooking up to the lift circuit so that he's got float. We're gonna be hooking up that hydraulic top link and if you throw that lever up into float mode, you can allow that hydraulic cylinder to drift without uh, it locking up on anything. Before we go disconnecting anything on the hydraulics, right before you do that, I want you to stand back from the tractor and uh, grab your loader lever, move it to all four positions to make sure all the pressure is out of your hydraulic system. If there's any pressure in there at all, even just uh, hoses sitting in the sun can create pressure in there and that's gonna make the couplers not wanna go back together. And you'll have to uh, relieve that pressure one way or another. So we're going into this black and green. We're gonna do these one at a time, so there's no chance we get hoses crossed. If we do get hoses crossed, not the biggest deal in the world. We are after the pressure relief system in the loader valve, so it'll just act funny. Well, then we'll go fix it. But let's do these one at a time. We're gonna do black. If you remember how the valve sat, there's an inside and an outside. Since black is on the outside, we're gonna go up there to the outside of the switching valve. I've relieved the pressure, and I'm going to disconnect the black coupler. If you've never had these apart, they can fight you just a little bit. But there we go, it's disconnected. Now I'm gonna take this right up and plug it into the diverter valve. Okay, I've got my black hose here, and it was on the outside of the tractor. So it's gonna go on the outside coupler here. Take a minute, get it routed neatly and relieve the pressure off of it as best you can. And on this tractor, the hoses are in a sleeve. Can't quite see it on the camera, but I'm gonna to need to clip a zip tie and move this sleeve just a little bit. Here's what I'm looking at. The hoses are in this sleeve valve. And there's a zip tie right down here. I'm gonna clip that so that I can move these hoses around just a little better. There we go, there's another zip tie up underneath there that's keeping me from twisting anything around like I want. All right, so black hose coming up. I'm gonna plug that into the female coupler on the outside. It's locked in. To figure out which hose to connect back to the black connection on the loader connections down below, here's my black connected to the outside port of the switching valve. And if I look straight down, I can see that that port is in the front. So I'm gonna go to the front port that has hoses coming out to connect right back down to that loader connection. So black went into the outside coupler at the top, which is the front circuit. So that front hose is gonna go right back in to the black coupler down here. That's it. And just let that hose find a good resting spot. That looks pretty good there. Now we're gonna repeat the process for the green. It comes out here. And since we've already done the black, I know this one's gonna be green. I can go ahead and plug it right in. Make sure those collars seat all the way back forward, especially if it's old, got a little crud in there. That one didn't quite want to seat, so just spin it around a little bit.
make sure it seats all the way back. That looks good. Those hoses aren't gonna rub anything. And now I'm ready to take this green and plug it in up on the switching valve. All right, green hose is up, ready to go into this coupler. Okay, the switching valve is hooked into the loader circuit. We've got hoses disconnected from the loader circuit coming into the switching valve. Hoses going back out of the switching valve connected to the loader circuit. Now all we need to do is run the remote hoses to their final destination. Remember, this kit can power a remote on the rear of the tractor. That's what we're going to be doing today. If uh, we wanted to run these to the front for a grapple or something, we would just bring the hoses right here along these existing lines and we could zip tie them really nicely to that. And we could usually make it to this front crossbar and put our hydraulic couplers here along the crossbar somewhere. Since we are coming to the rear of the tractor, we're going to come back and mount to this roll bar here. We've got an existing bolt that I think we can use to secure the bracket to. Now it's time to get these remotes put into place. If you're going to the front of the tractor, we're going to leave a nice bit of flex here so that the loader can move up and down without stressing any hoses. Get it up there to the front crossbar. If we're running to the back like today, we're going to come down here under the floorboard, head towards the back of the tractor. I'm going to be looking for secure spots where I can zip tie these hoses up out of the way, uh, probably running right alongside these existing hydraulic lines. And then I'm gonna to get to the back up and over the axle so we're not hanging down underneath the axle, dragging on anything. On this tractor, we do terminate with 90s and I've got them marked here with blue tape and it'll have a little sticker saying tighten after mounting. If you need to get through a tight spot, you can take that coupler off and then uh, we'll just reattach that later. And I do that because with the 90, you could want to change the angle or something. Easier to just not have it tightened on there. So try to find the neat routing. If you need to take that off, do it. All right, I've got the hoses run up inside the roll bar over the axle, and now I'm gonna be looking for a place to mount this T-bracket where it can hold onto these couplers. And I'm seeing an existing bolt here that would be a really nice place to mount these couplers, have them sitting up here out of harm's way. We need to be careful where these lift arms are gonna be when they're down and when they're up. So here just to the side out of the way is a really good spot for those. When we go to assemble this T-bar, it's gonna be attached to the tractor here on the back, and the coupler is gonna sit on it just like that. And a U-bolt is going to go around the coupler on that widest groove, and slide into the T-bracket just like that. Then we'll put nuts and washers on the bottom there. As we do that, this part, this inner piston, has to be able to slide in and out about three-eighths of an inch. This outer sleeve is fastened hard to the bracket, and the inner part, when you just shove in a coupler or pull out on a coupler, this inner part flexes. So as you get this assembled, finding a spot to mount it, make sure that that inner piston is going to be able to slide. All right, this spot worked really well for us. This uh, bolt needed a half inch wrench, or I suppose probably a 13 millimeter. It is a metric nut. I like that it's nothing structural for the roll bar. It is simply holding this fender on. So undoing it there, and we've got a big washer underneath the fender. We were able to bolt this bracket on. Now all I need to do is bring my hoses up. And remember, these couplers are not tight on there yet. So I'm gonna hold them in place figure out what angle that needs to be and tighten this swivel onto the hose at that angle so that it's really nice and relaxed when it sits on there. As you tighten these, wrist tight. You don't want to put your whole arm into it. 
these swivel nuts just sit on three or four threads. So don't really crank, crank it tight. It seals up internally. So just put your wrists into it. All right, that coupler is done. I'm gonna hold it right there and put its U-bolt on. Now this one is gonna need to sit up and over the other one. So this hose is gonna go a little bit behind your shield there, but it needs to stick up. It can't quite run over this other one. There we go. We can see that this one has to be at least up at an angle, making room for this lower one. These can be just a little squirrely. I'm gonna hand tighten that to hold it in position while I tighten. All right, now we just need lock washers and nuts. All right, with uh, the U-bolts tightened onto these couplers, our installation is really complete. I've uh, settled these hoses kind of into their place, and we've got a little bit of hoses hanging under the tractor. We're gonna zip tie all that up. Before I leave the back of the tractor, I like to make sure these couplers are working correctly. And so that means I'm gonna take one of the male couplers that comes with the kit. Here, I've already got it on a hose for this top link that we're about to install. And I just wanna make sure these couplers work well by shoving in a coupler, it should spring this inner part in, spring back to connect. You may need to dab a little oil on these couplers when they're brand new. These O-rings are probably dry, so you could dab a little oil on there just to make it go quick. But let's see. There we go, slide in, that's connected. To disconnect, simply pull. Let's check the other one. Slide in to connect, out to disconnect. It should just be that easy. Okay, let's go ahead and get this top link on. We can test everything and then we'll zip tie those hoses up out of the way. On some tractors, these side lift arms keep you from pulling that pin. So we had to uh, raise the lift arms with this implement kind of sitting here. It'd be easier if there was no implement, but uh, I think we'll get it here. Well, there you have it, the simplest and most affordable way to get a set of remote hydraulics on your tractor. Today on a John Deere 4120, but I build these kits for any tractor out there, new or old. We've got this bracket holding the switching valve here, and with a simple push or pull of this valve, you trade one of your loader functions to run that remote. Today we're running a hydraulic top link, and I'm going to show you how that works in just a second. Take a minute at the end of the video to check out my website, linked right below. Also like this video and subscribe to my channel to help more people find these videos and get more out of their tractor. All right, let me show you how this kit works. With the engine off, anything I do is just gonna be powered by gravity. And then I'll fire up the tractor and show you how it works with the engine off. With the knob pulled out, I've got totally normal loader function, lift and dump functions. When I'm ready to run the remote on the rear, we installed this kit on the lift function, so I'm gonna set my lift just wherever I want it to be set. Push in on that knob, and now the lift function is gonna stay right where it's at. When I move forward and back, I'm gonna be moving the 
hydraulic top link or whatever you've got hooked up to the remote. You never give up your dump function. I can still dump anytime. Or you can install this kit on the dump function and you'll be able to control whatever's on the rear end and still be able to raise and lower your bucket if you're brush hogging and want to be able to skim that along the ground to look for, uh, for obstacles or something like that. So let me start with the knob out. So I've got totally normal loader function and I'm going to show you how this works with the engine on. Totally normal loader function with the knob out. Check out all the products I offer on my website, linked right here below, and thanks for watching.